friends, and welcome to Costuming in Color, a YouTube show dedicated to showcasing amazing costumers of color and those that support them. I'm Gigi, a cultural history buff, historical costumer, and dabblist. And I'm Noelle, a costumer who likes to play both sides of the historical and cosplay world. Today, we are interviewing Naomi Glazer. Welcome to the show, Naomi. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> first house rules Gigi makes us say them <laughs> the first rule of costuming and color is that you tell everyone about costuming and color yes this, right right this way even if you don't have people of color in your local groups you can get to know some in our global community awesome the second rule is that kindness matters and aside from that there are no rules so let's get into it <laughs> Where are you from and do you still live there? Hi, well, I am from Florida, specifically Gainesville, Florida. Go Gators. <laughs> University. Gatorade. <laughs> yeah, they go. It's home of the University of Florida. Um, I've been, I was born in Fort Lauderdale, but I have lived in Gainesville my whole life. So I'm Florida through and through. It's ingrained in me. Here we are. <laughs> awesome. Well, what is your favorite thing about Florida? My favorite thing is definitely the natural springs that we have here. Um, you can go swimming in them. Uh, they are millions of millions of years old. They're absolutely stunning, crystal clear, blue water, cold. Um, they're amazing. And it's just a magical experience. Every single time I go, I'm always just like in my happy place. <laughs> Um, but they are, they are fantastic and just a wonderful tribute to Florida's nature. Not a lot of people know about them when they come to visit, but if you ever do, look up a spring near you <laughs> and go. I promise it will be amazing. <laughs> you know, I'm not normally a Florida going girl. You're kind of selling it right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's, I love the beaches and stuff, but like the fresh water and the mm -hmm. wildlife and the crystal clear blue water and everything like that. It's just, that's what makes it. Whenever I try to convince someone to come here, I'm like, I'm taking you to a spring and you're going to yes. love it. <laughs> All right. Well, what is your IG handle and why did you choose it? Um, well, it's Na at Naomi Loves History and I feel like it's very self-explanatory because <laughs> um, I'm Naomi and I love history, <laughs> um, all types of history, European, I love Northern American history. Um, it's just been something that's been a part of my life for so long and I was just like, well, it's self-explanatory and that's me through and through, so let's do this. <laughs> what is the costuming scene like where you live in Florida? Um, well, there's a lot of costuming groups in Central Florida, like Orlando, in Orlando area. Um, but around me in Gainesville, there's really nothing. Um, but uh, in St. Augustine, which is like an hour and a half away from me, um, away from me, it's the oldest city in the U.S. And they have wonderful um, colonial Sp Spanish colonial reenacting groups there, um, costuming groups there. And I've participated in a couple of them, but mostly I'm just kind of on my own, doing my own thing at this point. Um, <laughs> just kind of outsourcing and going to different events out of state, but also just like doing things at my living history town, um, living history farm here in town. So, yeah. <laughs> How far are you from Atlanta? Um, about five hours from Atlanta. Oh. Okay, that's farther than I had anticipated. Yeah, yeah. otherwise I would be going up there more often. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of stuff going on there, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, cosplay, historical, or both? Uh, historical. I, while I deeply admire and love cosplay, it's just, my historical has taken over my life. <laughs> and I think it has the most inspiration for me as well. So, and I feel like I can participate more and do more things with it. Um, so that's what I, I love the historical part of my costuming and stuff. <laughs> I don't blame you. I also yeah. like, I want to dip my toe into hit, like cosplay a little bit, but then I'm like, well, but how do I know if it's right? Like, what do I research to know? Like what they <laughs> yeah. actually were, but they did it because they're fictional. So it's just, a, it's a different thing. Right. Um, so I there's like almost no research if you want there. To, I mean, you can deep dive research into characters. Absolutely. But like 
Also, you could just be like, that outfit is cool. And then, <laughs> yeah. But I want structure. I like the structure of historical. I like being able to like have a certain date and a time and this and that and that. And I yeah. guess I enjoy that. I get that. <laughs> May I offer to you my method of doing cosplay through historical? Please, please do. <laughs> Yes. that's what I do like all you my costumes to. are base or they're actually cosplays but I I'm like mm, I'm gonna make a bustle dress <laughs> yes your Iron Man bustle dress oh my gosh yeah oh my. <laughs> I did a, I've done a Merida I've done a Watson from Sherlock Holmes so like they're it. all actually cosplays they're just like shh don't tell anyone <laughs> 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 yeah I do like that approach. So Naomi, um, what time uh, period or place is your favorite for historical? Oh, it's so hard because I, I have done Civil War like 1860s forever. For, ever since I was a little girl, I, that's how I started in that time period. And just in 2020, when the pandemic got worse and we all did lockdown, I was like, I have all this free time to sew and research. I'm going to do 18th century, which is something I've always, always, always wanted to, to dive into. I've just never had the opportunity or the resources or whatever. And so it's a really close contender. I, I don't think I could pick either or, but 18th century and um, 1860s, like 1770s and 1860s is my ultimate, just cherry on top. <laughs> and That's so my- I'm curious about how you got your start in costuming. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, so I started, I was in like, um, I always like loved American Girl dolls and Little House on the Prairie and all that stuff. Like that was my jam when I was a kid, (laughs) all the way up, still is my jam. Um, But my friend in third grade, she was, her mom works at the Living History Farm in my town. And she invited me to one of their events. And I went and it was like they have like a 1870s farm um fully functional and they have a cane boil every year and so they harvest all the cane and um the sugar cane and they grind it up make syrup have a whole festival food stuff like that and so I went and something clicked in my brain (laughs) that was just like this is what I want to do I want to do this I want to dress up and teach and do all this stuff and so I went every year since um dressing up and teaching and I got more into it my mom picked up obviously my mom picked up on my intense and such obsession with um historical stuff and costume and all that stuff so we went to a couple of reenactments in my state um and I got involved with a couple of groups and like civilian living history and um all that stuff and I just carried it with me (laughs) And I learned how to sew and the clothes were so fascinating and it was just absolutely fantastic. And I think the last few years here, I've really been able to sew for myself, um, but it has been such an incredible journey. I am so excited every single time I complete a project and like, I did something, it's amazing. <laughs> Dude, me too. You? Right, but, but how old were you when you started? How young are we talking? I'm probably like eight, 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 eight years old. Yeah. So that was probably the first time I went to the Living History Farm and I got my mom sewed me my first outfit. <laughs> That's awful, but it's so cute looking back. <laughs> and um, yeah. And then my, I sewed my first outfit when I was probably 16. Um, and that's when I first sewed my first like 1860s dress and then I didn't really sew much after that because my mom was the, my mom is the sewer of our family and so um these last few years I've gotten to do my own thing and it's been empowering <laughs> what keeps you in the community I stay with this community because it's such an incredible learning source for me I'm a very visual hands-on learner um and loving history, being able to be visually and like physically stimulated is absolutely amazing for me. Um, So being able to learn more and more and more, that's just like, that's my bread and butter. But also being able to teach and being able to talk and to 
find people like me that aren't like the, I mean it's not the typical thing that people do right like you don't dress up with your friends in old timey clothes and like go out now other people go to like bars and stuff I want to go have a tea party with my grown friends <laughs> um but I've been able to find such a community and being being a being an adult now and being able to go places and meet people and all that stuff it's just been absolutely amazing and I've made the most incredible friends and I get to meet incredible people and women as such as yourselves <laughs> um so it's that's that's really what keeps me in here I, I just I love the connections and I love being able to learn yeah like right now I'm sitting here I'm like how far is Gainesville for me could I possibly go visit Naomi like I want and I'm like St. Augustine of course I should have thought about that before where can how can I so the yeah, community makes sense that that makes sense um what would you like to see improve in the costuming community? Um, I would love to see a lot of things improved. I mean, there's not a lot of spaces for people of color um, in these communities. And whether it's an event or a living history interpretation at like a farm or a museum or whatever, you don't typically see people of color in those um, in those areas and you don't see their stories represented either. Uh, and, and that's something that's so important to me and being a person of color, I, I intentionally put myself in those spaces, but that doesn't mean that someone would be comfortable doing that themselves. And as and I, I'm a shy person, so I, I try to push myself to do better, but I want to be able to have people, especially people of color who are interested in history and interpreting and all that stuff, I want them to be able to feel like they can go anywhere and go to any event and not feel like an outcast or not feel like they're being judged or being asked weird questions or anything like that. Um, it's really important to have those types of spaces and, and that's, it's something that's really important to me. Yeah. I mean, well said. <laughs> we need more. Yeah. And we, we got to figure it out and do the work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of work to do. I think that a lot of people underestimate it. And they, it, it's definitely a thing that's not prominent in people's minds. So, like, trying to be better and do better is an intentional thing that you have to think about all the time. And that's a lot of work, but it's worth the work. <laughs> yeah. You also have to be willing to accept that the first couple of times you do that, you're going to screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> <Not to. laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just keep going. Yeah. yeah. You have to, you have to keep going and building and, and making connections and making a safe space and making um, a place of mutual respect is really mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Onto a slightly lighter topic. What is your favorite completed project? My favorite completed project. Well, as far as a garment goes, I'm in process. <laughs> Ooh. Making um, an 18th century pet, pet and lair. Pet and lair, I think it's called. I can't say that either. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much for those who don't know, it's like a half robe a la Francis. Like, um, but that's, it's a green and gold pet and lair. And it's, in, it's in progress. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Um, which I'm really excited about and hopefully it will be done by the end of this year. Um, but as far as, can I say like my favorite, like a uh, personal accomplishment as far as like an event goes? Yeah. Um, I did a couple of years ago, I was invited to an immersion event, which is uh, pretty much uh, an event that you stay in character the whole entire time in a historical setting. Um, and it was at Genesee Country Village in New York State, and we had the whole town to ourselves, a whole group of us, like 30 women, children, and men, and um, we did the whole weekend, lived, breathed, ate, slept, 1860s. <laughs> um, wow. It was a free person of color, and uh, a couple other African-American interpreters were there, too, but that was the most intense and most fun I've ever had, and it was probably I felt so accomplished because you like when you're in that setting, it's very intense. And like you, only, I only met a few of the people beforehand, so I didn't know everyone. So interacting was really 
kind of scary, but it was the most amazing <laughs> experience. And it was really, it, I, I worked from morning to night. I was like, I was working at a tavern. And so I was like getting up, making breakfast, cooking, doing this, whatever sewing I was a seamstress I, I became a seamstress for the town by accident <laughs> and so I had orders coming in and <laughs> it was really it was so fun um but that was probably my most proud moment as a reenactor <laughs> were you Instagram did you Instagram a bunch of this after the fact a little bit I just did a couple of posts um uh -huh. I I wanted to do more I just it totally slipped my brain as and did you do a live event with some of the other people yes yes i did i that. remember that 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 was that seemed like a really uh intense but also rewarding experience yes it was incredible i i had the best time and <laughs> i can't wait to do it again unfortunately got postponed this last two times but you yeah know, it's definitely something that's for advanced but it's so fun <laughs> um so i really had a great time that's my point biggest accomplishment to me. <laughs> I love it. I love how, yeah. you know, even us introverts <clears throat> will go the extra mile to go to something like this. Like I've been invited to some similar things and I'm like, if someone said, Hey, you want to come to this party where you don't know anyone? I would say no, but <laughs> like, do you want to come to a historical immersion event where you don't know anyone? I'm like, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so strange. <laughs> the things we do for love of history. Exactly. <laughs> so on that same vein, um, events in general, what is the silliest thing that's happened to you during an event? Great question. <laughs> I think a lot of silly things about, as, as far as like questions go, questions I get asked, it's a lot of like, is that real fire? Are you, uh, are you actually from the 1800s or, is that a real food? Like, like when I'm cooking and stuff, I do a lot of cooking demonstrations. A lot of people are just fascinated by the fact that I'm cooking over a fire and they're like, is that real food? Like, what are you making? Is that, are those real? Like, what, what's real? And I'm like, it's all real. <laughs> As it turns out, most of human history is like this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, um, but I think probably one of the silliest things that has happened to me at an event was probably, uh, I go, I, as a kid growing up, we went to this one event in Florida called Battle of the Lusty, and it was a Civil War reenactment of the Battle of the Lusty in Florida, which is like around 1864. And um, it's a whole huge campground and people come in and they set up their tents and stuff like that, very mainstream, very, you know. <laughs> um, but we camped out for the whole weekend. and. I was in the, we were in the civilian town and one year it just rained and it rained and it rained and then it froze. <laughs> um, everything, it went, got down to like 20 degrees. And so we have to walk up this huge, this really long path to get to a water spigot to get our water. And so early one morning, me and my, one of my good friends, we, get our yokes and we get the buckets and we walk up and we were able to like avoid the really muddy patches but coming back <laughs> we just sank in the mud <laughs> in fully decked out clothes so everything got soaked and muddy and frozen and disgusting and it like climbing through the mud trying to get out <laughs> and it was awful at the time but looking back I can absolutely laugh my head off about how hilarious it must have been to see two girls in like 1860s clothing trying to claw their way out of mud with buckets and pails and like just falling and flailing everywhere and just absolutely in, in sadness. <laughs> Did um, the water make it back? Half the water made it back. <laughs> That's pretty good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I call it a win. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you know, you you win your battles. <laughs> yeah. Uh on that same vein, do you have a sentimental or nostalgic costume memory that you'd like to share? Yeah. Um, I love doing historical dancing. So um 
I have gotten the chance to go to a couple balls and like dances and stuff like that. And I think it's probably the most magical experiences of my life being able to like do the group dances and everything. And especially the ones outside, there was this particular event we um, um, went to that we all had a huge barn dance, but it was outside under the stars. And it was just absolutely the most magical and wonderful experience I've ever had with my friends. Um, and it, it was just so wonderful to be able to just dance and be, be just really happy and just forget about the modern world for a few minutes, you know, it's just wonderful. <laughs> that makes me send heart bubbles out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, tell us uh, what costume and groups or organizations are you in or do you participate with? Um, so just a couple, but I am part of the Sons and Daughters of Ham, which is uh, has Shani McKnight and Marvin Greer and Hugh Goffinet and a lot of other really prominent African-American interpreters. Um, they do a lot of um, historical interpretation of like contraband and just the daily lives of African Americans in uh, a range of years, <laughs> but the ones I've been in have particularly been part um, focused on the 1860s, and it's been an incredible learning experience. I mean, being around with all those amazing minds is just, I always learn something from them every single time. It's wonderful. And then um, I'm also newly part of a new group called Southeast Eastern Living Historians, um, civilian living historians. And that's just like the Southeast, mostly based in the Carolinas group that does a lot of historic interpretation in the 18th century. Um, and it's been really, really fun learning from them as well. I got to go to one of their events last year um, and it was really, really cool. Uh, so yeah, but that's mostly, that's, those are two groups I'm part of. Other than that, I just kind of do my own thing and I travel to events or if I'm invited, then I, then I go. <laughs> That's awesome. What is your entertainment routine? Like, do you watch movies? Do you listen to music? And if so, what do you listen to or watch while you're sewing or crafting? Oh, yes. So <laughs> it's a little bit weird, but uh, <laughs> there's this particular video that I watch specifically when I'm sewing historical costumes. Um, when I was a kid, I was in love with Peter Rabbit. And there is a series, an old, older series, I think from the, like the 90s or 80s, um, that was an animated Peter, Wonderful World of Peter Rabbit series. And there is a particular episode called The Tailor of Gloucester. And <laughs> um, it's just a bunch of fantastical. Uh, it's about a tailor in the 18th century who's so trying to sew um, garments for the mayor and his wife on their wedding day on Christmas Day. And, it's, <laughs> and it has a bunch of uh, mice and animals, talking animals, and um, <laughs> trying to help him sew and, and learning about their little lives and singing and singing um, nursery rhymes as well all throughout the streets of Gloucester and it's just absolutely adorable I have it on repeat every single time I sew it's just so cute um and it's really near and dear to my heart since I love that episode so much but if I'm not watching that then I'm watching a historical drama or listening to classical music just to get me in the mood <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, is that on streaming or dvd or like how are you watching that um, it's on YouTube and uh, it's called The Wonderful World. It's called The World of Peter Rabbit series and the specific episode is called The Tailor of Gloucester. So, yeah. All right, people, we're going to link that down below because I think we all need to have this experience <laughs> at this point. Like, <laughs> I'm in. Sometimes when I'm sewing, I, you know, because I'm a beginner, I want help from anything so if a mouse walked up and offered to help at that moment I'd be like sure I'll listen to whatever you have to say <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah. they make their own little costumes too and I just I I die every single time it's just right. the most adorable thing <laughs> definitely linking that we will do that um <laughs> yes, thank you. can I make an, a public service announcement for anyone who's wondering why Gigi's sitting in the dark <laughs> I'm sorry 
no do not I'm apologize darker as we go yeah Gigi is a hero right now she's filming this while sitting in a powerless house after a hurricane just ran through her town so her love of costume and color is coming <laughs> through right now so this is why she's sitting in the dark for us today <laughs> So I am, I, it is, the sun is going down. It's 5.30 central time. I'm in New Orleans and Ida just paid a visit. So yeah, there's no light here. So let's, hopefully we can catch the final rays before the yeah. end of Naomi's interview, which I'm enjoying so much. And I, so yeah. I have another question. Um, who inspires you? Like I, I told you when you, when you joined the, the Zoom call that you inspire me, like we are so excited to meet you because of that. So who, but who inspires you? Um, my biggest inspiration, especially for historical interpretation and stuff, is Cheney McKnight <laughs> of Not Your Mama's History. Um, I am her number one fan. <laughs> she has been, ever since I discovered her, she has been just this beaming beacon. And she's like, I'm like, I want to be her when I grow up. Like, I, I just, she's amazing and she's a wealth of information and she's so strong and she has such an empower a powerful um and impactful uh experience on anyone that she talks to interprets to um and i got the chance to meet her in 2018 and now we're good friends and i still look up to her like she's amazing <laughs> and i i can't believe that i i get to actually talk to her on a on a, on a daily basis <laughs> um but she's amazing and she's my constant inspiration um especially whenever I have a hard day with in in interpreting or if any anything's like hard or difficult like I can always look up to her and be like she's doing it and I know that I could do it too if she can do it I can do it so it's amazing and I'm blessed to have her in my life <laughs> She is an amazing person. We've done an interview with her and got to meet her too. And she's like, she's everything I expected her to be and more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What or who are you grateful for? Ah, uh, I am incredibly grateful for my family and my friends. Um, without them, I would not be where I am today. Uh, especially my parents, my mom, who has supported me intensely throughout this whole entire living history thing. <laughs> um, without her, I definitely would not be where I am today. And so shout out to Teresa. Thank you for raising me. <laughs> hey, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so she's, she's absolutely fantastic. And obviously my friends and family have been amazing. And I, I owe my life to all of them. <laughs> they're, they're incredible people. If you could give new customers one piece of advice, what would it be? Ah, <laughs> guys, please, please. The whole point of this is to have fun. You need to have fun. Be, be, first of all, establish goals. What, where do you, what do you want to do with this? And like, how, how do you want to enjoy this? And just run with it. Um, you can do your research. You can watch videos you know do all that stuff but at the end of the day it really just comes down to what makes you happy and that's all that matters like you can have people who are sticklers and like being mean about certain things and authenticity and all that stuff it doesn't matter like at the end of the day we are just trying to have fun and do this in the best way that's best for you so please have fun with this please 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 because it's so fun, especially when you find the right group of people, um, a good group of friends who are into the same thing. It, like, it's just the best, blast, best, blast, blast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's probably my, probably my advice. <laughs> At this point, if you have a closing message on inclusion or equity, um, we'd love to make some room for that right now. Yeah, um, being inclusive is the most important thing that we can do right now. Being able to have platforms that you can see anyone, whether it's body type or skin color or ethnicity or whatever, having those spaces available for people, not only just customers, but like people on the outside who are looking in, who, who, who are visitors, 
or or guests or anything like that that's so important to have that diversity um with all of this because there's not just <laughs> there's not just white people in in history there's black people there's asian people there's there's mexican and latino and 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 it's just there's so and natives and like there's so much history out there and it needs to be shared with the world and so being able to have all of those interpretations and all those stories brought to light is so important and i that's that's my biggest hope for this community is that we can have a space that we can share those stories for everyone um and so yeah that's that's my closing <laughs> thank you yeah thank you Solid agree. <laughs> all right thank you so much for joining us today naomi it was lovely to get to know you a little bit better today and thank you also to our viewers for joining us today. We will leave a list of Naomi's information and accounts down below for you to follow her on her platforms. Yes, please do also give a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't. And if you know a customer of color that you think we should interview, please use the form in the description box below to tell us about them. Make sure also to leave love for Naomi in the comments below. Stay safe out there and take care of each other. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>